Лев Абрамович Изадович. Блядь, сукин сын. I come all the way from Moscow to this remote piss hole, and this is how you greet your old commanding officer. What do you want from me, Colonel? I wanted to show you something. Recognize this? What you wrote on these pages could condemn a man several times over. But before that happens, comrade, first I need to know the truth.
This young lady is Anya Zelinska. Yes. Stalingrad. I remember. Those Germans tried to surrender and... We won a glorious victory that day. Glorious? Tell me, comrade. When did you begin to lose faith in the cause? When we first met you were a true believer. In my men. I always believed in them. Turkin of the NKVD. Major Baladin has been relieved from incompetence, and I have assumed command. Comrades, the fascists are almost upon us. Our front line is contracting again. We no longer have the resources to hold the Germans here. But, sir, we have to slow them down. We can buy time for the civilians to escape. Lieutenant? Isakovich, Lev Abramovich, Comrade Colonel. Yes, Lieutenant, we must buy time. Not only for the civilians here, but for Moscow. We must also prevent the German bastards from capturing our supplies. Anything we can't load onto that train must be destroyed! see their faces as they stood there, stunned. We sacrificed a few to save a city. You showed great courage that day, comrade. Abandoning my men showed great courage? Yes! We were victorious! We faced an enemy that seemed unstoppable. We did what was necessary to keep the Germans from taking Moscow. You had proved you were ready for the difficult challenge we faced at Mzinsk. What was asked of our men at Ntsensk approached the impossible. Our victory that day halted the advance of the fascist oppressors. We stopped them, delayed them, which forced them to face the brutal winter to come. But at what cost? You were always willing to sacrifice so many brave men. Were their lives really so cheap? I did not have the luxury to agonize over every soldier I sent to die. They understood what was at stake, and their bravery bought us the time we needed to do what was necessary. General Winter helped us at Moscow, it was simply because his hand found more Germans than Russians. No! It was the courage and sacrifice of the Red Army and the Soviet people that bled and slowed the enemy. The fascists would have been warming themselves in a burning Moscow had we not fought so fiercely before the snows came. 
Every hard-fought battle was necessary to teach a lesson, comrade. To show us we could defeat the Germans. And this drove our troops to fight with great determination in Stalingrad. What drove us in Stalingrad was Order 227. Our soldiers had no choice. It was fight or die. There is no retreat! Not one step back! By Order 227, anyone who retreats will be shot on the spot! Executed as a coward and a traitor! Perhaps the enemy should save their bullets. Just let us shoot each other. But, really, comrades, there is no other option. The only way we're going to survive this day is to advance. We understand, Lieutenant Comrade. We are with you to the end. <laughs> like we have a choice. It was in Stalingrad when I realized you were losing control of your command. Why? Because I didn't send all my men to die. Because I fought by their side. You were never with us. Admit it! A good officer follows orders, without question. Gather it all up, men. Out! Everyone, out! Now! Hold still, I'll get you free. Ah, uh, no. Leave me, Yuri. But, sir, I'm pinned. And Fritz will be here any minute. What? That's an order! Comrade Captain. Huh? I ordered you back to base. Yes, sir. But you did not order me to stay there. I brought help. Major Polivanov let you do this? The Major was busy, Comrade Captain. We exercised initiative. Now let's get this building off you. Where have you been, Driver? Preventing the capture of a valiant Soviet officer, Comrade Major. That is no excuse for deserting your post. I want the rest of these soldiers executed in the morning, in front of the battalion. You should remain quiet, comrade captain. This had nothing to do with you. Or did it? I believe this captain is becoming a bad influence. Put him on the next train to Moscow. I had a lot of time to think about those men and what they did for me, and the price they paid for their bravery. Ah, yes, your long hospital stay. Most educational, I should think, was Sergeant Pozharsky sharing the ward. Sergeant Pozharsky was certainly larger than life. Being in his ward made the time pass quicker. <laughs> Cheer up, my friend. Why so down in the mouth? You're alive. We must celebrate that and drink to the memories of our comrades who cannot. How can I celebrate after what I have seen? So drink to forget. It works for me. Yes. But every night when I close my eyes, I am back in Stalingrad. At least in Stalingrad. You still had food. Leningrad was completely cut off. The Germans starved the city for over a year. Do you know what that kind of suffering does to people? It turns them into animals who will do anything to survive. 
anything. But survive, we did. Come, comrades! To battle! Fight! Bring them down! up with the Leningrad front, but the fighting was far from over. There were still pockets of Germans to clear out. They fought like cornered rats. It was Pozharski and his stories that started me on my path as a writer. You wanted me to inspire the troops with my words, but apart from the bravery of our soldiers, I found nothing inspiring about what I saw. Was being a journalist really worse than being a soldier? It was... different. After what I saw at Maidanek, I got drunk, and I stayed drunk for days. Yes, you were becoming useless to me. Useless? Do you even understand how it felt to see that, on top of everything else? I suppose I do, having read your notebooks. But we had to win a war. Yes, we had to win, but did it ever matter to you how we won? We did what we had to. I did what I had to. That's why I sent Sergeant Parzhatsky to see you. I thought it might do you good to see how a real Soviet soldier gets things done. Comrade Izakovich, let me introduce you to our Polish comrades. Well, not exactly comrades. <laughs> this young lady is Anya Zelinskaya. Anya knows the location of an informant. The Poles are going to convince him to come back with us. You will accompany them. My boys and I have another task, but we'll meet you back here. I will not wait for you, journalist. If you endanger us, I'll kill you myself. <laughs> Here is your tongue, Pozharski. He's ready to talk. Now, where are the supplies you promised us? That are needed in Warsaw. There, my Polish friend. All that you bargain for and more besides. The Red Army knows how to take care of its friends. <laughs> what in the name of God have you done, Pasharski? These Poles were capitalists and thieves. Once the Germans were gone, the Poles would have been fighting us. And we have been at war far too long. Nothing personal. Cutting it a little close, Lieutenant? Majdanek? Partisans? Murder? This is what you want to send? Yes, the people need to hear this. They need your words to inspire them, not fill them with despair. Don't you see how dangerous this is to the war effort? What is dangerous is pretending none of it happened. Those words will not leave this room. You cannot hide the truth forever. You are not thinking straight. A change of perspective will do you good. Report to Colonel Saitov and the Eight Guards. 
You're assigning me to a penal battalion? This is a death sentence. Go tell their story, Lieutenant. While you still can. We might as well call the fascists and tell them we're here. We can't keep chasing them through the woods. We need to change our tactics. They died in their thousands just to have a chance to surrender to the Americans. But all that mattered to the generals was the race to Berlin. Egos killed men that needn't have died. I suppose egos were at play, comrade. But it was vital that we reached Berlin before the British and Americans. The future of the Soviet Union depended on the Germans surrendering to us, not our allies. Berlin, the last stronghold of those fascists who still had the will to fight. It had been four brutal years, a long and bloody road, but this was their homeland and we knew they would fight to the end. Final victory would not come easily. Millions died to raise that flag. The irony was that the Reichstag had not been in use since Hitler came to power. All those graves, for a photograph. I tried to live with what I had seen, but every night my mind raced. I couldn't sleep, not for a year. I knew what I had to do. To honor those men, those soldiers, the truth had to be told. So I tried to defect. When I saw how you had betrayed us, I personally signed the orders to send you to the Gulag. I once read that in war, the first casualty is truth. What is inside that book is nothing but truth, comrade. All the men who fought so hard, all of their heroism, it's in those pages. Our victory only brought a different tyranny. I made my peace long ago with the truth. If that means my death, let them do what they must. We all reap what we sow, comrade. Lev Abramovich Isakovich, you have been found guilty of crimes against the state. The punishment is death. Do you have any final words? You'd better go now, comrade. Comrade Izakovich, when they sent me your book after your arrest, I must admit I never read it. Until the day I learned that I was not to survive Comrade Stalin's next purge. I've devoted my life to the motherland, and now I know I have one last duty to perform. I've earned the bullet. The least I deserve is to choose which bullet. So, I'll 
take yours. The stories of our brave soldiers need to be told. <laughs>